So hi, welcome to another interview for the Zero to ASIC course YouTube channel. And today we're going to be looking at Minimal Fab, which is an interesting semiconductor factory that you can fit in one room and it takes weeks to make a wafer instead of months. And to find out more about it, I'm joined today by Leo Moser, who recently won one of the prizes for a competition they had. Hi, Leo. How's it going? I'm fine, Matt. Thanks. Yeah, so before we uh, get started on the Minimal Fab, why don't you just uh, tell us briefly about yourself? Yeah, my name is uh, Leo Mosa. I'm cur currently living in Graz, so in, it's in Austria, not Australia, you know. And um, I'm a master's student um, majoring in microelectronics and IC design. And yeah, I just started out with programming and got through the whole route, um, more and more into a lower level until I finally arrived at the ASIC stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and so tell us a little bit about this competition. Yeah. Um, basically, um, I heard the first time about it when Proppy, so his real name, um, Johan Juflosan, I hope I pronounced this correctly. Sorry, Proppy. Um, yeah, he announced on the tiny tapebot Discord server that there is a new PDK, so a new open source PDK. And as you know, we don't have that many. We have the Skywater Global Foundries and the IHP one in development. And this one was a bit special. It's the ICPS PDK. And instead of nanometers, we are talking about micrometers. So it's something completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, instead of a mega fab, it targets a minimal fab. And yeah, that's a different uh, kind of process, you could say, because for this fab, you only need uh, one big room. And there you have uh, a lot of workstations that all do one um, step of the manufacturing process. And instead of a clean room, you have these small shuttles where there's the small wafer inside and you move them from machine to machine to perform each step. So the, the shuttle is like a mini clean room that the wafer stays inside, is it? Yeah, exactly. And that's also why the wafers are uh, very small in size, because it's not about the uh, mass production, but instead it is more about throughput. Yeah, and um, basically this was the new PDK. And then a week later, Proppy also announced uh, that there is now a um, minimal fab design competition. And that's when I had to submit a design. Yeah. And yeah, maybe I'll just share something here. Yeah, show us the design. Perfect. So this is my submission. And as you know, I, I have a lot of experience with digital designs. I submitted some projects to the Open MPW shuttles and of course to Tiny Tape Out. But yeah, this was my first design that I did uh, something with analog. And so I wanted to keep it simple. So I decided on a transmission gate D flip flop because actually I think it was around two years ago you did a video about the Skywater transmission gate uh, D flip flop and yeah. about meta stability and so on. And yeah, I thought back on this and that's why I actually chose this. So cool. So it's like this, 20, 20 odd transistors or so. Um, uh, I, I don't know exactly how many transistors I would have to count. And I don't know if it's exactly the same function as in the Skywater one, because here I really had to keep it simple, because later on you will see in the layout a lot of it is, is already fixed. And yeah, we will get to that soon. Okay. So here's the, here's the schematic. Um, I won't explain it here. Maybe you can link your video in the description mm -hmm. because I can really yeah. And this is using X scheme. Yes, exactly. So that was the first time that I really used the analog uh, design tools. So X scheme and NG spice and K layout for creating this circuit. Mm -hmm. So just a simple circuit and a simulation wrapper around it. Here I just drive the input signals. And what you can see here are the output signals. It's not so easy to see, but everything was correct in simulation. And now if we go on to the layout, you can see it looks quite complex. That's because 
the actual wafers, um, they were already pre-manufactured, so pre-diffused and up to the metal layer. And in the competition, you could only change the metal layer. As you can see, that's the blue layer. And you have these... Uh, so they already had the transistors essentially manufactured and it was up to you to connect them how you wanted. Exactly. So we have in this block, we have four PMOS transistors and in this block, four NMOS transistors. And mm -hmm. then there's also capacitors and resistors, but these I did not need, so I didn't use them. Okay. So I think the hardest part about this was to connect everything correctly up because initially um, a second metal layer should have been available, but due to manufacturing issues, only one metal layer could be used. And yeah, I don't know, there's a computer game called um, Factorio where you have to route belts and uh, to transport items. And it was pretty similar to that. But in the end, I managed to- Yeah, routing a PCB. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then just to make sure that everything is all right, I ran the DRC check so that the distances between the wires are all correct. And then also the layered versus schematic check to make sure that what I connected actually corresponds to the schematic here. And that was all done with K layout. Exactly. Yeah. That is uh, K layout, which was also pretty nice to use. Mm. And, and um, so, uh, Maybe it's changed recently, but until recently, I thought K layout couldn't do parasitic extraction. In that case, uh, there is no parasitic extraction used. Okay. Because the PDK in itself is also really in an early state. Um, there were measurements done on the manufactured chips and also the frequency of, of ring oscillators, for example, it mm. um, diverged from, from the real or uh, frequency with the simulated one. So probably, yeah, there's still other lot of work to do Yeah, in that regard. But yeah, basically that was it. And I submitted Great. my design. Initially, I didn't expect much because that was already fun. But as you said, um, I actually, or the design made the Minimal Fab Special Award and I got a certificate and actually a small wafer manufactured with the Minimal Fab. So yeah, show us wait for it here. Yeah. So as you can see, this is not um, the actual chip with my design on it. Initially, I, I thought it that would be the case. In yeah. that case, I could have uh, propped it with the propping station at my university, but I guess that got lost in translation. So it is a minimal fab mascot, which is also pretty cool. It's done with just a silicon substrate, titanium, and then gold. So that's how it was manufactured using a minimal fab. And it's incredible how small the wafer is because normally, I don't know your wafers you have around your neck. I, I guess this one would be easier <laughs> to put here. Most of the ones I have are actually 200 millimeters, which are a bit too big to wear around the neck. So I, exactly. I usually wear ones from the 80s. <laughs> it was more fitting with the hip hop vibe as well to go with the 80s. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you, and actually, I have one, I have one as well that Proppy gave me. Really? Um, yeah, but this one actually, I think it has some devices on it. I don't know what they are. They're like awesome. Uh, yeah. Then you have to measure them. Well, they're like yeah. I think you can pop these cases open to, but I don't have a probing station or anything like that. So just yeah more of a key ring than a necklace. <laughs> nice. So yeah, that was that. And um, regarding the future of mini minimal fab, um, in mm. general, there was a conference, um, Ishi conference, Interlinked Society on Homemade IC. And there also the minimal fab promoting organization had a talk there. And they talked about the last year and um, which progress they made. And also what things they are going to improve. And for that, maybe I can share another thing. So this is the document about the um, yeah, ICPS PDK. And oh yeah, and there's the logo in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, sorry again, in the bottom right hand corner? The logo we saw on the wafer is in the in the corner yeah, of the exactly. thing. Yeah, the minimal flap logo. Yeah. 
And it is also not just a CMOS, but a silicon on insulator CMOS process. So if you take a look at the transistors, on the left side, uh, NMOS transistor, and on the right side, the PMOS, we can see there is a box layer in between. So these devices, they are isolated from each other. So that's okay. also interesting. So you can't compare it to, for example, the first commercially available microprocessor, the Intel 4004, was designed with a 10 micrometer process in around the 1970s. So this one can't really be compared because this um, silicon and insulator is a completely different process, you could say. Mm. And what we can see here is um, the gate is made out of uh, titanium nitride, and it is pretty large, as you can see. You have a two micrometer overlap on both sides um, to the diffusion, and that's necessary because during manufacturing, if we just take a look at this page, first the diffusion layers are manufactured, so uh, P and N diffusion, and only after that the gate electrodes are added. And this step is easy, uh, not so easy, would be nice if it would be easy, to align the diffusion layers and the gate. So it's easier if the gate is larger, but of course mm -hmm. this makes your devices larger. So yeah. this is also something which is discussed. Um, there's a YouTube video of this um, Ishi talk, um, what they want to improve in the future so that smaller devices are possible. Okay. So it's also going we'll to link be... To, uh, we'll put a link to the, um, the video down in the, in the description. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so one thing that I think would be really interesting for people watching the video is that you've also written some really nice documentation about how to get started for minimal fab. So maybe you could show us, like, just walk us through a few of your bits of documentation and show us um, what it looks like and where to find it. Yeah, I'll do that shortly. So that's one blog post that I made about the minimal fab itself and the ICPS PDK. So this is the final wafer for the competition, so the layout of it. And actually... Um, so which one is yours then? Yeah, I, I would have to to look here, but I think it was... Um, ah, I actually wrote it down in the description, second die in the first row. So this one here. Okay. Actually, it's a, a second time on the wafer. So this one here is also my design. So okay. there weren't even enough submissions. So maybe next year, if there is another competition, um, I hope that more people will join also from outer Japan because it's interesting yeah. to see other designs. Yeah. So if people want to learn how to do it, then they should check your blog out. Mole99.uber.space. Nice. Uh, yeah, nice you can here. link that one too in the description. Will do. Yeah, <laughs> and there's then also a second blog post um, which just goes step by step uh, through the whole process to design your own NAND gate using yeah. the ICPS BDK and also K layout. Here you create the transistors through P cells uh, yourself, and then you connect everything up until you get your final layout here. Yeah, yeah, and I when I read the blog post, one of the things I thought was really good was that. Um, you did go from the beginning to the end. So often like people leave out X scheme or the simulation or they leave out the P cells or they leave out the, the routing, but you did it all in this one post. So I thought it was a really good resource to share. Yeah, exactly. And it was also for me a, a really good way to really get to know the tools because as you know, I'm also pretty new with analog design and I want to learn more. And the best way to, to learn more is just to teach it to others. And that's mm -hmm. why I really try to write it down um, with each step. Yeah, I'm a firm believer mm -hmm. of that myself. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hopefully it helps someone. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Is there anything else you want to share? Um, yeah, maybe just um, I'm really excited for the future of open source IC design because um, so much has already happened in the last few years. And I bet there's more going to come. 
And I think it's also important that uh, every one of us just talks about it, about what is already possible. I'm also trying to do that uh, at my university. They are working on um, yeah, making a course uh, in a way that you can finish it with open source tools, not only with proprietary ones. And I also really like uh, what you're doing with Tiny Tapot because I think this is also an important piece uh, of puzzle in this whole thing. Yeah, so, the practical element. I think it's yeah. important to actually yeah. make something so, and it up, get it man. manufactured. Yes. Tiny Tapot 6 is open for submissions. So um, April 19th is when it's going to close. Are you going to submit anything this time? Yeah, I already bought a slot uh, or a tile, okay. and nice. I'm going to submit another design, I guess. Are you going to um, go with, now we've got analog capabilities, you're going to do, you're going to exercise your new analog skills? Not yet, not yet, but I think in the next one I will. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning to, I'm planning to uh, s improve my own analog skills and also do the documentation, <laughs> like you say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that also helps Great. then others, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and as you say, myself, by writing it down, I force myself to learn it. Yeah. That's true. Great. Well, thanks very much, Leo, for your time and telling us about the Minimal Fab. And congratulations again for being one of the winners. And uh, next year, keep your eyes peeled. Um, subscribe to the newsletter, and I'll put a announcement out when the, the Minimal Fab competition opens. And if you want to go, you can follow Leo's cool blog posts and make your own entry. Great. Thanks very much for your time, Leo. Thanks. Bye, Matt.